Hey everyone, Ben here. Now strap yourselves in because today I have a chance to fight at the very front in the Formula 3 at Jerez. I've qualified in third, but I was just a few tenths shy of the pole and even better, second place man Simon Cameron has clearly had issues on the way to the grid because he's not going to be lining up in his position. Now I love this circuit and I've got a chance to claim an extremely rare win here. Let's go fight for it. Waiting for the lights then. Here we go, getting ready to go green at Jerez. Oh, we were held for an age, but we were away, and now I've got a chance. If I can get over to the left-hand side of the track here, onto the racing line, to open up T1 for myself. And oh, we've got a challenge from Childs behind, but we just hold the position, and so we're up into second. Childs took Crozat off the start, and Halliday maintains his lead from pole position. We're all the way through T2, and then the long left-hander here, followed by another high-speed corner. Hedeth characterised by really fast, swooping turns the occasional heavy braking zone we're into the right hander here onto the very long back straight just trying to tease the car through here on cold tires and cold brakes not running out wide into that gravel trap on the left there's a real danger of ending your race very very quickly if you get out there onto the brakes then and into the right hand hairpin we're just a couple of tenths behind Sam Halliday then. Green flag, there must have been something gone on behind us, but my focus is solely on the rear wing of Sam Halliday up ahead. This is my best chance ever to win a race in the Formula 3. Yes, we've had some good finishes so far, we've picked up some podiums, but I've never really been truly on the pace of the leaders. Now this is a slightly lower split, but nevertheless we've got pretty good pace, pretty good consistency. This is a track that I really enjoy racing at, and the margins in qualifying were super small. So we're heading round to finish lap one of this race, and we're nicely tucked underneath the rear wing of Halliday up in first and now it's all about building a race challenge. Before we start doing that let's take a look back to what did go on behind us on lap one because it's a big shunt and it collects a few cars one of which is Martin Santa Maria Iraza. Now he will ultimately come out of the pits on lap three and he'll do so just ahead of myself and Halliday. You can see him there just going into the left hander. Now this is going to become decisive in the future of this race. We're coming through the left-hander then and you can see we're gaining on Irizar hugely. He clearly is where he's got the leaders approaching so he's slowing down and he's going to let Halliday through. Now really unfortunately for me I'm going to arrive just as he's on the apex. That pushes me out wide and it puts me under huge pressure from Childs behind and you can see now Childs looming large in my rear view. So I'm going to be under attack here into the final hairpin. I'm going to go defensive Try and hold the inside line. Childs is in deep. He's a right away around my outside, but he's going to have to be slow on the exit if he's going to hold that car. And he is, but we are still side by side as we barrel down towards the start finish line. We've got the driver behind, all kinds of interested, as well as Childs has got the inside line for T1. I'm going to try and hold it around the outside. I'm going to fight tooth and claw for this position here from Barry Childs. Then he's still down my inside. I give him space. He doesn't run me out wide either. This is fantastic. So Side by side racing here as we're going to come onto the left hander. We've got the inside line here, but that crucially is we're going to come the outside line into the very fast right hander onto the back straight. And unfortunately, I'm going to lose out to Childs. And now I'm under pressure once again from the driver behind. That's Remy Crozat, he's down my inside, but it looks like we've got better speed down this back straight, but he's going to have the inside line for the hairpin. We're going to be too wide once again, going on for nearly half a lap now, side by side with other cars. We're going to have the inside line for the next left-hander. He's going to try and stick it around the outside. I'm going to be compromised into the next left-hander here, and we've just lost so much speed on the lead of the race, and in fact, our chances of winning this thing could well be over before they'd even really got going. Let's take a look then from Crozat's on board at that fantastic battle between myself, Childs and Crozat. He's going to be following in behind here as I'm side by side with Childs. Childs has got the inside line here and all of this was because I was so compromised by Irizat trying to let the leading pack through. Here we go then through T1 and you can see I've still got my car ahead of Childs but I have to leave a space on the inside. That's going to give him a chance to fight back once again and we're side by side through the left hander. Krizat just very wisely keeping a watching brief here but he must know in the cockpit that an opportunity is going to come his way because I am 
offline here. So he's going to try and follow Childs through onto the back straight. That's exactly what he's able to do. However, in giving me space on the outside, he loses a bit of top line speed through the straight. And that's going to give me a chance to defend into the hairpin, even though I'm on the outside line. We switch to my perspective there. Then you can see how close we came to touching in the middle of the corner. I'm going to try my best to hold on just a little bit longer into this series of left-handers. But ultimately, I can't do it. He's got the momentum around the outside. I have to settle in in fourth position. We rejoin the live action then on lap seven, and I have been trying to put all sorts of pressure onto Crozat up ahead. We started in third, remember? I was hoping that we'd be challenging for the win, but unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have a real fight on our hands to even get a podium out of this race. Running in fourth position, we've got the pace to get past these guys, but it's going to be a really hard for battle. And you can see Remy Crozat makes a mistake on the inside of the right hander there. That gets him out of shape. He has to slow down in order to collect the car that's going to give me a chance down the inside of the hairpin here got to hold it tight to the apex and we are clean and passed and that is me back up then into third position let's take a look on replay then and my pressure paid off a very small mistake from Remy Gros out there but that was enough to give me a chance to have more momentum down the back straight you can see he knows he can't really defend it certainly not by coming to the inside I'm able then to claim the high ground through the corner and I'm far enough ahead in the braking zone for that to be relatively straightforward. However, it wasn't to be straightforward for very long. On to lap 8 and Crozat wants that position back. Here he comes. You can see looming large in my rear view mirror. I am going to go defensive. Hold the inside line this time. He's all the way alongside me on the outside but there's just not room there to be able to hold it and I'm able to just about hold him off this time at least but clearly this is a battle that is going to rage through the rest of this race and all the while Childs and Halliday have cleared off up ahead here we go again then on the very next lap Crozat has the inside this time into the hairpin I'm going to try and hold it around the outside I'm able to do it through the corner that will give me the inside for the next couple of turns and it looks like at this point I might have succeeded in holding him off but Crozat is not done there he's going to try again around the outside I've got to leave him space and look at that he just about holds a tyre alongside mine I've got to give him space through the next right hander I drift slightly wide and unfortunately Unfortunately, he's been able to do it. He's got back past me. What phenomenal racing here at Hedef. I absolutely love it, even though this time around, I'm the one who's lost out to Krizat, but this is a ferocious battle. We've been side by side, lap after lap after lap, and unfortunately, it isn't for the race win, but it is for a podium finish, and I want that podium finish, so I'm gonna have to try and fight back with what's left of this race, because here you go, you can see Krozat just had the inside line when it mattered, gave me plenty of space on the outside, but he had the move done. On to lap 10 then and another back marker has appeared up ahead and you can see I've kept really close to Crozat's rear wing here so I do have another chance potentially to get past him but this things are going to get even more interesting. Look at the pop out camera, that's Barry Childs making a mistake just up ahead out of second place as he was pressurising Sam Halliday the leader. He's rejoining then and look at that Crozat gets past, I'm not going to have chance to get past, he's going to just rejoin ahead of me but surely he is cooked his rear tyres Barry Childs is he going to be able to hold the car through the next few corners as his tyres return to a working temperature we're going to find out I'm going to give him just a little bit of extra room through the next corner because I really did in the cockpit think he was going to get it wrong and he has he's up off onto the gravel that's going to slow him down as he rejoins the track I'm going to have the inside line for the hairpin get later on the brakes and I'm going to keep it nice and tight to the apex and that is me up then into third position Barry Childs has thrown away second place he's now down into fourth but you can see he's in a big hurry to try and make those places back he's hurrying me through the left hander I've made a small mistake the car's drifted out wide and that is going to give him the space to get back past me I pull out I didn't want to go side by side with him because he's clearly very ragged here and you can see again up ahead he's up onto the gravel he's struggling to keep control of this car so for now I take a view that it's better to just settle in behind him I'm confident I'm gonna have chances to get this position back I do not want to retire from the race at this stage and he was all sorts of out of control there throughout that lap as he was struggling to regain his composure and this battle would rage for the next three laps. We're on to lap 13 now. 
Childs has managed to just about get back to a consistent pace, but I can tell following him from behind that he's really struggling with tyre heating issues. He's overheated the rears. Here we go through the hairpin. You'll see again he gets out of shape. This is going to be a big chance for me to get back up into third position and secure that podium position for myself. You can see we've got the overspeed as we cross the start finish line. Climbing up the hill into T1. I'm going to be on the outside, but I might have a chance of holding it around the outside. No, I don't. Childs fights me off on the inside. I'm going to shape to the inside just to try and put him off there. He sees that coming. He doesn't react, but he does light up the rear tyres and and he's off into the gravel and finally we're back up into third position let's take a look at it again on replay once again just superb battling here at head f we're around the outside into t1 you can still see Krasat and Halliday up ahead. We haven't really lost too much touch with the leaders, but Barry Childs has, unfortunately for him, as he skids off and into the gravel. But ultimately, as we rejoin on the final lap of the race, we weren't able to reel Krasat or Halliday in, but we finished very, very close to the race victory here, just five seconds shy of Sam Halliday's race finish time. If I hadn't been caught up in all of that battling all race long, maybe, just maybe, I would have been able to pressure Halliday into a mistake and claim my first win in this series. Indeed, my first iRacing win since 2021. As it stands, it was still fantastic fun, this combination. I fully recommend you give it a try. And if you enjoyed this race video, then I think you'll really enjoy the one that's on screen now.